Hey everyone, those are a few opening shots of me trying to shoot Spears Gold Dot in 38 Special, 125 grain, plus P, Gold Dot Hollow Point. As you can see, my revolver is not very kind. I can never shoot the 642 well at all. It always bites into my hand no matter what grip I'm using. But, alas, that's not what we're here to talk about. So, I was really excited to finally find this round on my shelf at one of my local gun shops. I haven't seen it in 38 Special for almost six months now. I paid $32 for a box, which is about $10 more than I was paying six months ago, but it is what it is. I just really wanted to see how it performed in ballistics gel as the 9mm versions and the 40 and the 45 versions all have done really, really well, and it's a round that there's a lot of talk about and people really seem to swear by. So I already took this out and ran it through a chronograph. I had an average of 838 feet per second with a muzzle energy of 195 foot-pounds. This is a little bit slower than what Spear was advertising at 945 feet per second with 248 foot-pounds. I was a little bit actually worried when I first ran this through the chronograph as it seemed a little bit low. I was expecting to be in the high 800s, even maybe in the low 800s. Um, for those of you who watched the Remington Golden Saber, it's the same weight bullet and I think I was getting 880s somewhere around there. Um, I forget, I have the notes actually in front of me. Uh, 892 actually, which is more of where I would like it to be. But that said, let's run it through some ballistic gel. Here you can take a look at the round and see what it looks like. And so let's see how it performs. So let's take a look here at the block. Again, it, it passed through, which is really, really disappointing. So I'm just going to show you the wound track here, this permanent cavity and how it extends, and then I'll th throw the grid on, and we can take some measurements. So there you can see it entered from the left and exited out the right here. So put the grid right on here. Sorry, bear with me as I shake the camera all around and give you a headache. All right, so here we are. So you can see here, at about four inches, you get this little cavity starting to form. That is going to run all the way down here until just about 11 and a half inches. At its widest point, it is going to measure just under three quarters of an inch. Looks like maybe 0.66 inches, I would call it. And it goes down here and exits. Exits. Can't speak. You can see here all the denim and the denim plugs. At the beginning there, you have the denim entering, but you can see how much denim was dragged in. I don't know if you can make it out, but you can see some more deposits there. So there's some more denim, and right all that through there is some more denim there. You can see it more in the top half here. So I just try to polish the block and it looks like I already have a huge smudge, but there you can see it. Alright, so that's the gold dot through the ballistics gel. So I want to take a look and kind of show you what this uh, that, te that large temporary cavity looks like. So what I did is I had just took a cross section on the block and that's that cavity there. And you can see my finger, it's well bigger than my finger. It's, it runs a little bit over an inch, about an inch and a quarter, um, going from here to here. So that's just, it looks really, really devastating. And, you know, what I'm trying to figure out is what exactly causing this. Um, my belief is that it's the hydrodynamic pressure of the bullet and the bullet shape and the inertia of the bullet stretches this cavity out, which some of that's going to lead to a temporary stretch cavity, but I also believe it's causing permanent damage in this permanent channel here. Uh, from what I've read, that temporary stretch cavity doesn't matter in a handgun. I'm going to throw you a link to how 
where I got this information to kind of make these conclusions. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I, I'm not an expert. I'm still kind of learning and just reading everything and anything I can find. So if you have any more information, uh, please pass it along. But I'll give you a list of links of some really good stuff that I've been reading um, that I take in consideration. So that's this part here. And then I also did a cross section. And again, this bullet didn't expand. So it's not the expansion and the cutting of the petals that's causing this damage, but um, that's what it looks like. Just really, really awesome looking. So with that said, uh, let's take a look at the bullet and give you my final thought. So here you can see the bullet. This is exactly how it came out of the water jug. You can still see a large chunk of denim there. I believe that the hollow point cavity was just clawed with denim, leading it not to expand. With that said, I had higher hopes for Spears Gold Dot Cartridge. This is a 38 Special Plus P, which was running a little bit slow out of the chronograph compared to some other Plus P rounds. I thought performance would be a little bit better as Gold Dot is kind of the pinnacle in defensive ammunition world. They do make a short barrel version of this. I haven't had a chance to see it on the shelves or test it, but it's something I definitely want to in the future. But the regular gold dot um, would probably be better out of like a four inch barrel or maybe even a three inch. But if you're shooting a small snub nose like the 642 or the 442 or the LCR, this round I just don't think is gonna cut it as there is no expansion and velocity seemed a little bit low. So that's my review and testing of Spears Gold Dot in 38 Special Plus P 125 Grain Gold Dot Hollow Point. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit like. If you want to see more, subscribe as I have lots more ammo testing to do in the future. If you don't like the video, please comment and let me know why. Thanks again.